All right. Thank you guys so much once again for showing up and uh, coming here to learn some more about Flatiron School. Um, as you probably can see on the screen, uh, my name is Zach. I will be kind of guiding you today through all of this little um, info session. Um, you know, come couple highlights about me. Um, I am an admissions rep here at Sophomore or in Flatiron School. Um, if you guys apply, you'll end up getting someone like myself. Um, feel free always, for, goes for me and any admissions rep. We love to chat with you talk through finances, talk through the admissions process, comments, concerns, like we're all here for it. Um, we just wanna make sure we're helping you propel forward on this journey you're taking because it is a big deal. It's a big career shift. So I just wanna make sure if you need anything, I'm here. So without further ado, um, we're gonna go through four programs today. Um, software engineering, data science, cybersecurity, product design. Um, I'll give you a little overview of the admissions process itself, career services, um, our jobs report, and then I will leave time for Q&A. Um, during this, if you have questions, you can pop them in the chat channel below. Um, if I don't hit them while we're going through this in live time, I promise to get to them at the end. Um, but please, you know, don't hesitate. No question too big or too small. So thanks. All right, so our mission here, what we're trying to do is just enable the pursuit of a better life through education. What that means to us, our North Star is to help you students move forward with your lives, um, get a good job so you can have a very fulfilling long career. And we wanna help get you there as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, I think doing any one of these four skills is a special opportunity. These are tangible skills that will help not only get you a job very quickly, but something that will get you from A to B as efficiently as possible. Four-year degrees, college, still a great route if that's what you want to do, but the new ambiance of what's kind of happening in the shift is like people want hard skills and something they can get them very quickly, and you can learn these skills essentially like within 15 weeks as possible. Um, I'll talk about our lengths of our program and things like that, um, but if you're really considering a new career and want to do that, we want to help you get there. A um, couple facts about us in general, um, founded in 2012, Adam Inbar and Avi. Um, if you search the, the realm of YouTube, you probably find some great Avi videos back when we first started. He kind of the brains behind the actual um, program and kind of setting that up. Um, and Adam was the brains just kind of making this um, formula for everyone else and able to get access and let students really learn the curriculum and move forward. Um, obviously, with COVID things going on, we used to have a bunch of campuses. We now have two campuses that are doing in-person, uh, one in New York City, one in Denver. Um, that will change as COVID gets better and the world kind of comes back. Uh, but currently, we have two that you can do in-person if you're ready to commit for full-time. Um, but we'll also have more campuses later, but all classes are also online. So you don't have to, just like we're doing right now, this is totally what you can do. Um, programs, like I said, data science, cybersecurity, product design, software engineering, Pick your poison, feel what's good for you. Um, they're all very great skills and great um, things to achieve, take a lot of work and effort. But I always tell students there's no wrong choice. Follow that passion, that drive, because that's what's going to keep you warm when this inability does get hard. So um, other things that we're really proud of is our graduates. Um, we help students get jobs. It's not a magic bullet system by any means, uh, but the formula in place and how we are helping students get these skills um, has just landed them jobs. So it's off the heels of your hard work. It's great. Um, just a couple companies to kind of throw out there and like we have employer partnerships with um, an arm of career services, which I'll talk about later is just about helping different ways to connect, whether that be resume building and mock interviews, whether that be a way to do just bigger companies, smaller companies, every student is going to come in differently and how they kind of perceive what they want. Um, so this is kind of some jobs out there. Um, the biggest thing I love about this list is like, yes, there's some big names, but the other thing I'm thinking about is like, it goes to prove how digital our world is going and how they need software engineers and cybersecurity and product design and like people who can do the work because our world is getting more and more digital. So the more you can like rein in one of these skills, the more you're gonna have opportunities come at your door. Um, breakdown of just the, what we offer. Um, I always say it's two extremes. I'm ready to quit my job and fully commit to this course or I can't. Um, the simplest way to put it is a live program or a flex program. So we invented live with the fact that we want you to get this done 15 weeks, Monday through Friday, nine to six, um, fully committed, like 
no can't have any vacations coming up um you know no vacations no you know getting married no jobs like you got a lot of things on your plate you just kind of kind of clear that for those 15 weeks and just be married to it um it's a lot to ask from our students um i can't tell you how hard i can imagine just dropping everything having to figure out how i'm gonna you know stay alive for 15 weeks how i'm gonna take this intense program that is just a nos that's very very fast paced but if you're willing to do the work and you're able to make those arrangements 15 weeks, you could be on your way to a new brand new job very quickly and efficiently. The other side of the coin for normal folks like myself as well, like we have, we're busy lives. We got jobs, we got um, got to keep the lights on, got other things going on where we can't just drop everything. So we created this flex model. Um, flex is basically um, 40 to 60 week program. It's all dependent on how you manage your schedule. How you manage your schedule is how you're going to do in the class. Um, that section does have live lectures, but they're more linked up with the full-time course. So essentially you'll live predominantly off of recorded lectures, um, Slack channel, you'll have study groups. You can still make one-on-one -on -one time with a real live instructor, but it's all about like flexibility. You can move faster or slower depending on what you can achieve, but it lets you just adjust your pace without any penalties. If you work really hard one week, take a vacation on the next, no one's gonna come after you. The only thing that changes is your end date. Um, if you have more confusion questions about that, you can always let me know. I know it's kind of weird how we chop it up, but really just uh, fully committed or I can't really do that right now. Those are kind of how I chop it up. So I'm going to start going into the programs kind of one by one, just giving me really overarching in, um, views of them. Um, but if you have more questions about them, I can kind of dive deeper there. So software engineering, um, design, development, maintenance, testing, um, basically evaluation of websites, computer software. Um, in short, you're coding. You're coding every day, front end and back end languages, building and developing apps, um, going through the full motions of a full developer. Um, you know, grads kind of come in and out and there's so many different opportunities that a software engineer could envelop. Doesn't have to be like just a back end developer, front end or whatever that is. Could be product manager, um, could be a lot of different things. It really just comes down to if you're a problem solver or someone who likes um, really digging into the why of things. Um, someone who likes Googling things, which is a big part of being a software engineer and just finding the right answers. Um, snapshot of what our curriculums kind of looks like. Um, as you can see, heavy on JavaScript, we got front end, back end, and then you'll always end with a final project. So each module, you can picture it as, um, you know, you'll do the fundamentals, you'll do a project. Back end, you'll do a project, front end, do a project, so on and so forth. So you're simultaneously building a portfolio learning new languages and eventually putting it all together with a bow on it. So you can go to the final project um, where you can have your capstone and what you're gonna show off to future employers. Um, my best way to describe this curriculum is we're teaching you to be a forever learner. This will not stop here when you finish their school. It'll give you tools that'll make you dangerous, make you able to adapt to new languages because essentially that is your job. You are just adapting to new languages, figuring out as you go. And if you're going at this speed, you're going to know how to use your time efficiently and quickly. So think of that's kind of what we do and what we're trying to envelop in each student who comes through here. Um, at the end, like I said, we have a portfolio project. Um, this student, for example, they did this thing called Money Moon. Um, basically, they put together an app to combine finances of like newlyweds, um, kind of tracking and seeing like what they're spending and how they're spending it. Um, obviously, newlyweds, it's great when you're all excited and you got all these new expenses in your life. It's kind of good to see how that all comes together um, as you kind of go through it. Um, sorry, I got a question on here. Um, yes, this presentation will be emailed to you at the end of this. So if you got to skedaddle ahead of time, don't worry. I'm happy to um, send it to you after we're done. Moving on to data science. Um, obviously, sci data science, um, I always say it's for more of my math driven people, um, scientific methods, process algorithms, um, extracting data, creating a story to help better businesses, essentially. You were there to analyze and go through data, whether that be Steph Curry's three-point shot or figuring out where your best leads come for a company. Um, it's definitely fun to get in the, the meat of it and kind of really dive in. Um, you know, the kind of things you'll go through, you'll have data analysis, um, you'll have statistics, uh, machine learning, really getting into the meat of things. Um, it goes very quickly in kind of a sense of what you're trying to build, um, but you can get all like really fun advanced topics. Um, if you're someone who likes math, wants to be learn Python a little bit, um, really wants to dive into theory, like this is a great like kind of module and product how it's set up. 
I always say, you know, data science are almost a dime a dozen. Um, so one thing to like have a passion for what you're going for. I think, you know, people get scared about how the math background things kind of come into play, but I wouldn't let that scare you away. All this is definitely learnable. And if you're someone who likes telling a story and shifting through lots of data, um, this is could be a good fit for you. One of the projects that they had on here um, that was really cool, um, one of the girls made this portfolio project that basically focused on examining how women are represented in films. Um, and it created this kind of web flow of it, of which one would be uh, presented on the dashboard of like an end user and like what most interests them if they're searching for different actors and things like that. Um, once again, just another like way to utilize data and kind of track it down and tell a story. Um, there's many ways you can do this. Um, I had another student who created a, analyzing puzzle pieces to find the most efficient pattern within like a box of puzzles just spread out on a desk. Um, there's so many different ways you can analyze and chop it up and it opens more doors than just the basic ones that you may see on the initial. Um, cybersecurity. Um, cybersecurity is probably one of the hottest topics out there right now. Um, you know, we're protecting systems as we probably all learned and just in the last break of COVID on top of things, um, data is very valuable. Um, websites getting hacked, our bank accounts getting hacked. Um, you know, cybersecurity is not like in the movies where you're just taking down airplanes from a computer far away. Um, cybersecurity is a lot of pen testing, um, security analysis. And truly the cool thing about cyber right now is, you know, there's like a 90% unemployment rate right there. Um, just because we don't have enough students able to do the work to fill the jobs. Um, it is something that's very intensive. Um, I always say like you almost need kind of like a software engineer background or trying to get into it. Um, once again, not to scare you away on any of that stuff like that, but it's really making sure you can type in like your Python, really demonstrate your ability to like learn on previous courses um, and really just be analysis and consultant side. Um, it's a really good one to jump into if you're like looking for some challenge and you like a uh, curriculum that's kind of built on like a, a lecture lab kind of flow. Um, this has been kind of one of our new focal points for our, our advancement. Um, and a lot of students have been taking it with stride. So um, I can send you and I will send you all the syllabuses on these if you want a little more nitty gritty of it. Um, but just as like in general overview, it's all broken down into four sections. The fifth one being the project section. All of our courses will kind of include that. Um, here was one of the projects somebody did. Um, basically, they made this operation center to troubleshoot threats, um, kind of broke it down into each section of what systems we're using and which ones are being attacked most frequently, um, just to give you a perspective of like what we probably need to up the security on, what we need to rethink, um, and what are where places we probably shouldn't store stuff because it's getting broken into too often. Um, and our newest one, I would say newest, it was here before COVID. Um, we took it away and brought it back. Um, but product design, um, otherwise known as UX UI design, um, which is in short, you know, using design and research and data to solve problems with user experience. Um, one of my favorite analogies I like to use for user experience is like riding a horse. Um, user experience UX is how you feel when you're actually on the horse and riding it. UI is the sternums and the straps and everything you put on it to make your ride more enjoyable. Um, essentially, that's what you're doing. Um, different websites, um, different apps. Think of like the best app you use day in, day out and you love. Think about the worst app that you're fo forced to use, whether it be like a ticket app. I mean, I think of workout apps and things like that that I wish it would just not be so clunky. Um, someone thought of that up and how the flow and process would go. Um, so when getting into the curriculum, you'll kind of get a studio look like this. We are taking you from the ground up. We want you to learn the process fully of UX, full process of UI, put those together in a studio kind of section where you can work with other students, um, learn how to collaborate and come together because that essentially will be your job. So when you get to the end and you build your portfolio and you're getting on a job interviews, you have some feet to stand on of like, this is how I know to work on a team. These are the where I contributed. Um, this is how I learn. This is why I'm driven more to the UI process and the deliverables and mockups and solutions like that. Um, it's big pieces of it, basically. Um, other things for this program that you'll need to know, you do need a MacBook for this program. Um, we require Macs just for the UX UI program specifically, um, product design. A lot of the programs we use like Figma and Webflow, those are kind of very dense programs that you will get a free membership for when you sign up for our program. Um, but that's something that you can deep dive in more um, as you kind of progress. 
Um, this is one of the projects they finish. Um, essentially, this one is helping like grow your own food, um, but the layout and the design and kind of how you're looking at this and like how each thing flows and like kind of goes through um, is what essentially you're designing, you know, aesthetically pleasing, grammar, color, like all this stuff. So anytime you open an app and think about it, someone that not only put in a lot of research analysis, but also thought about what would draw the eye and keep someone here while they're kind of going through this and every click and flow, um, how that feels as they go. Um, so those are our four programs. I know it's kind of like a lightning bolt. Um, we're happy to drive more into which one. And when you talk to your admissions rep about which one you're most interested in, they can dig a little more deeper if you have specific questions, but you can always ask me as well. Um, the Flatiron team. Um, this is, these are your people that you're going to be going through when you go through this process. Um, as you apply, as you get into the instructors, as you get into technical coaches and people helping you out, um, this is the kind of flow you'll see. Um, admissions representative, someone like myself, walks you through applying, walks you through the interview process, um, finances, making sure you have everything you need that you can start on time when you want. Um, and then you kind of lead into um, the lead instructor who will guide you through your entire course, whether that be the full-time or the flex. Um, you'll have technical coaches. They are kind of your side back pocket people that when your hands are up and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing and I need some guidance, they're there to help you kind of like a technical advisor or TA. Um, and finally, when you get to the end of this, you're going to have career coaches. Career coaches sole purpose is to help you find jobs um, by making you a successful job seeker resume building, mock interviews. Um, they put you through the ringer and all those things and they do make you work for it. It's like you work hard in the program. Um, obviously a lot of y'all like, I've interviewed at jobs, I know what that goes for, but this is more pertaining to like, if you're a software engineer, they may ask you to code while you're in the interview, you know, what kind of questions they're gonna ask you and how they prepare you. We'll just give you your best shot of nailing each interview. So at the end you could be like, I get to choose which one I'm looking for rather than like being forced on upon. Um, secure and expand class. Um, I know every school out there has their own in, um, interview and process. Um, this is just a snapshot of ours. Uh, I'm going to go through each one as we go. Um, I always say like this process can go very quickly. And like if you're a good candidate and kind of what you're looking for, um, it can go all the way to the place you get to the pre-work, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, but I think the pre-work and the finances is the, the longest part of this, just securing those and making sure you put in the work ahead of time. Um, but the written application, why you're there, um, completing the assessment, all important pieces of this to make sure you're in the right spot. So submit a written application. You know, first and foremost, you go on our website and you click that big apply button. Um, they're going to ask you about your background. You know, do you have any tech background? We accept all people of all levels. Um, this is a hard skill and we can talk about what that actually looks like. Um, my biggest concern when I have new students is always thinking about it's not a fact that I don't think you can do this. I've seen people go zero to hundred every day. It's a really amazing thing to watch. Um, my biggest concern is make sure you've coded enough to know this is something I enjoy. When it gets hard, I'm going to continue on. Um, new skills like anything else take a lot of time and effort. It's like doing reps in the gym. You got to stay consistent to make get what you need to go. Um, I always say, don't think too much on this. You can put a lot, you can put a little just put like what you're feeling, right? Hey, I'm trying to find a new job. Like I'm currently in this position. Um, this interested me because of this. Something simple. We love, and I personally love just hearing your story. Like everyone's got one. Um, I love hearing where you're coming from and like how you got here. Um, when you should apply. So a um, couple of should nows on here talking about like creating a or changing career or like how much time you have know, to commit per week to the program, you know, um, you don't need to know like to hack or design or things like that. Um, we just want you to be prepared as possible. Um, the biggest thing when you go through this admissions process um, is it, the pre-work, which I'll talk about a little bit, is going to be probably 60, 70 hours of work. It's going to be due a week before class. Um, I'll reiterate this in a little bit, but essentially I like to say you should apply and be accepted at least a month out. That gives you enough runway to get work done just so you can prepare on time. My goal is to set the table for success. I want you to be confident and start with like as least anxiety or at least like stress as possible. You know, I know on top of maybe if you're doing full time, you're preparing things on the back end, like putting your job and getting things in order. I just want to make sure you have enough time to secure what you need to secure. So if you can apply it sooner, the better. Even if you're months ahead, it's better so you have the more runway. I have a question here. 
Oh, great question. Um, I got one on here. I'm gonna stop for a second. It says, what makes Flatiron stand out amongst the other boot camps? Um, what's the competitive edge? Um, I think first and foremost, um, there's so many boot camps out there. They're popping up like dandelions. Um, it's, it's wild to me. Um, I always say money and time are relevant. After that, it's where you think you'll get your best outcome. Um, things that Flatirons does really well, we get people jobs. Um, that is not an attestment to us other than putting in good processes. It's you, the student, and where you want to put your hard work in the heels of your hard work. Um, I truly believe that whether you go here or another boot camp, wherever you decide I'm going to say nothing's going to stop me is where you're going to get it done. You essentially can learn a lot of these things online for free. The main draw to most schools is it's efficient curriculum tells you exactly what you need to know. So there's no gaps. And then when you get the job, they're helping you find it. Um, so that's what I, that's what I rely on students. Um, I love you come here, but I also know there's a lot of great options. Um, I got another one from Greg. Um, what is your most popular program at the moment? Um, I would say our bread and butter is software engineer. Um, I think people going zero to hundred, it's a great popular program there. Um, usually when I think about that question, I think about like, stick to your passion. Don't say which one makes the most money or like which one's easiest to get on there. I just think it's most important to figure out what's driving me. What do I really enjoy? What's the job actually like? So that way, like, even if you put in all this work and got to the end, if you're in a job you don't like, kind of takes away from the point. Um, good question. I'll get to more too, if there's more as we go. Um, just gonna hop back in here. Um, step two, uh, we'll have in the application process after you apply, um, you'll complete an admissions interview. Um, commissions interview with someone like myself. It's over video Zoom call or a phone call. Essentially what happens is I just wanna get to know you. There's no like technical, there's no nothing like that. I'm not gonna agree with too many questions. I really just wanna make sure that you are in the right place. You can have the floor to ask questions that things were unclear. And then I will essentially give you like next steps depending on how that goes. Um, I just want to get to know you. I, I don't want to pressure you or feel like sweating like this is like the, the end of the world here. Um, I just want you to feel confident kind of coming in. Um, after you do the admissions interview, you're going to do something we call a missions assessment. Our missions assessment essentially is our technical interview, 15-minute um, quiz, 50 questions long, all multiple choice questions, um, not a lot of coding. Essentially, what we're doing is trying to get your logic and just make sure it's sound and how we're looking for it. Um, example questions will look something like this. Um, to me, it reminds me of like SAT style questions, you know, could be very far away. Um, I know some people, how they feel about uh, taking time tests and like creating anxiety in that world. I always tell students, don't stress too much. Um, there's articles on how to pass it. Um, you do get two attempts if like the first attempt doesn't go well. Um, your admissions rep will walk you through this, but I always say like, this is just by prelim, prelim, preliminary, like we really wanna just make sure that your sound um, thinking skills are there for critical thinking, but if it's all good, we're moving forward. I have some great questions on here. I'm gonna get to them in one second, I promise. Um, and this is a decision. So you've now completed your assessment. Um, you've did the interview and now we're looking at, um, have you gotten into the school? Um, this can go very quickly, essentially. We're just trying to make sure that um, we get back to you in an efficient manner. I know you got a lot of things going on, um, usually a call after we know, um, but it's usually based off the interview and also just the assessment score that you take. Um, it goes very quickly. Like I said, we're not trying to keep you in the dark, um, but let's assume you get it done and you're ready to go. Um, we'll accept you to the school and then we'll start talking about next steps, um, one of which is going to be pre-work. Um, I hit on this a little bit before, um, every program that we have is going to have pre-work. Pre-work essentially is something that prepares every student so they all start on the same page. Um, it gives you an opportunity to be like, do I need more time? Um, am I a little bit in over my head currently, but I can get to where I need to be successful at it? Um, and just to make sure that you're in the right section, the right course that you chose, um, because this is the path. This is only the beginning. I always call this phase zero because you know, this is where people really have to shine and like prioritize it or not. Um, not prioritizing pre-work will never get you to start. It's, it takes a long time. I would say it takes about a month to get done. Um, everyone moves at different paces. There's no wrong pace to move. Um, and then everyone, I swear, just feels like everyone's ahead of each other. But in reality, everyone's struggling in the same parts. Um, we're a community here and we want to support you through this journey. So you will have access to this, which will look like Slack. Um, there's different channels for different programs. You can do paired programming with a technical coach if you're like really struggling. Um, we have um, webinars like this that just talk strictly about pre-work. 
how to plan, how to stay efficient, um, how to problem solve things that are not going well. So each of those will have very different ones on there. Um, tuition and financing. I'm going to pause for a second to answer some of these questions for y'all. Okay. I got one on here. What are ways I can figure out which career path is best for me? You actually made a great point about not doing something just because it's popular, but do something that align with my own interests. Thus, I'm stuck between two different paths and not sure which way to go. Uh, with investing so much money, I will make time, make sure I want to make the right decision. Absolutely great question. Um, it's Let's be honest with ourselves, right? Like, this is a big decision. You're putting a lot of money on the table and time. Like it's a big decision. Um, I always recommend to new students who are coming into this. Um, we do have free courses for each course. Um, they're in each of our tabs and they're usually like just a taste of what you're going to go through and what's going to go in our curriculum. But other things I always encourage people to do is like, if you're doing UX UI product design, Google has a free certificate program, totally free to do. Um, Udemy is a great resource. We're not affiliated with them at all, but I do love their stuff. You can upskill on anything, not just software engineering, cyber and all that, but they can do like a three month course for like a hundred bucks. Like that's a small investment just to see, can I stick with it long enough to enjoy it? Do I enjoy it? And then do I want to move on now to the boot camp? Um, I've had some great students come through here, like talk to them now. They call me back three months later and they're like, I now know I love it. Let's do it. Um, I don't expect you to learn this in a weekend. I don't expect you to be like, aha, I now know everything. Like these things take time. Um, so I always say, don't just get discouraged. Like this is a hard thing to do. If it was something everyone could do, they would. Um, theory over practice. Some people get in and get imposter syndrome, get in over their heads. Like this is gonna take some time. Like just remember that, um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So cliche, but it's true. Um, so those are what I'd recommend. And I can send you some resources. Um, how weighted is the critical assessment in the admissions decision? Um, we do use it as our technical interview. So it is like, it, you, it's kind of a pass fail in a sense. Um, you do have to get a passing score to move forward. Um, if you do not hit it twice, um, we basically have to wait and we'll make you go through like boot camp training before you can reapply for the program. Um, all those words sound very stressful. Um, I, I assure you when you're talking to your admissions rep, like if you wanna wait to talk to them before you even take it, like we'll talk you through this. Um, it does feel bigger than it needs to be. I truly believe it's just a, it's an assessment to see where you are with your logic. After that, the pre-work that you'll see, that's the beast. Like that's what you're really gonna like have to like struggle through to get. So don't worry about it. We'll, we'll handle it, I promise. Um, another one on here. What if you are interested in more than one area? I enjoy data science and have always wanted to learn coding and software engineering, but also have good skills that lend into infosec decisions. So um, I, I have students come all the time that like they're, they just happen to be good at both things. And they have really passion for interest in both. I think that's great. Um, if you're 99% on one and 100% on the other, I would choose the 100% one. Um, there's no wrong choices in that scenario. If you enjoy what you do on both sides, you can pursue one pretty far down your career path. And then like later down the line, if you want to pivot, you can pivot to another one. Um, for our program, if you were doing both of them, you'd have to do one fully, go work and then come back, pay for the program again and do the other one. Um, so I know that's a hard decision. Um, I think that takes with time and effort of kind of how you're processing it. You know, I've had both people, I've had data scientists say, I need to learn software engineering skills because that's how the market's going. And I've had software engineers say like, I'm tired of building things. I want to go on the more data-driven side. So every animal exists and like how we kind of go through it. Um, I always say just like going through the motions and making sure that you're thoroughly going through like the data science or thoroughly going through software engineering, taking some free courses, whatever that is, because um, it'll hit you. Like, even if it doesn't feel like hundred percent enough where you're like, what kind of work am I doing? Even encourage you to reach out to people on LinkedIn who are in the jobs that you think you want. Like there's a lot of very kind people in this, this industry and they want to tell you how it is. And you can make the decision if that sounds like the life you want. So great questions. Um, I'm going to jump back into tuition, but we'll have some more question time in a little bit. All right, financing. Um, we have three options for financing currently. Um, and the cost of tuition, if you're not aware, um, 16,900 is the full cost. All students who are accepted to our program are required to pay a $500 deposit that gives them access to pre-work and that 500 goes straight to tuition. So really the last payments you're gonna have is 16,400 since you already put 500 down. Um, one note about the deposit, um, we do require it, but like, let's say you pay it, you're starting pre-work, you're getting through it, 
you're like, this is not for me. I don't want to do this ever again. Um, as long as you withdraw before you start the course, we can refund the deposit. It's not a refundable deposit if you start. It's only if you decide to back out, we're not going to keep your money if you decide this is not what you want to do. So that eases some nerves at all. I know it's a big investment on that part. Um, but for three options for payments. So number one, you can do an installment. Um, we do have a 12-month um, installment plan. Those come out probably to about still $1,200, $1,300 a month. Um, it's interest-free. So I always say, you know, got some passive income, got some money coming in, and you just want to pay it in like that. Um, that's a good way to break it up. Um, another option we have are our loan partners. Um, we currently use Skills Fund and Climb. Um, they are personal loans. It's not like a college where they're using FOSFA or anything like that. Um, this is strictly just based off you and kind of your credit score and plugging it in. Um, they, some lenders also do offer a cost of living loan if you're thinking about doing the live and like just want to lump sum it. Um, I always say they have deferred interest options. Um, they have a bunch of different kinds on there based off your credit score. Um, I usually send you the links to their lenders and they're on our sites as well. They're very kind people and they would love to talk you through it. Um, your admissions rep will be helpful to you, but at the end of the day, I can't talk finances because that's your personal information. I'm just laying out the options and helping you explore which one hopefully fits. Um, there's also scholarships opportunities. I know students ask about that a lot. Um, scholarships for diversity initiatives. So I, almost everyone qualifies for a scholarship. We're just trying to make sure that we give everyone equal opportunity. Um, after you pass your assessment and are admitted, you can ask your admissions rep and they will send you a link to apply for scholarships. Um, they range from like one to $2,000, somewhere in that range. So I always tell students after the deposit, best case scenario, 14,400, 15,400, somewhere in that range is still what you have to come up with just for tuition. Um, I know it's a big number, um, but those are just kind of how it's laid out in case you're just wondering if checking off boxes of schools. I'm gonna pop open the questions real quick. Ah, what are the start dates for each boot camp? Um, each boot camp on there, you can click like software engineering, product design. The first thing that should pop up when you click on their individual page are the start dates. There's usually a start date once every month, sometimes two a month. For example, our next start date is June 6th, which that one's already closed for our admissions. Next one after that is June 27th. So there's two coming up and there's a July 18th. There's a August, September, October. There's usually one or two every month. Um, just remember what I said, just try to prepare ahead of time. So like if you're June 27th, you should probably be applying now and hopefully getting in so you have enough time to do pre-work. Good question though. All right, career coaching. Um, big draw to our program. What people really love about it um, is the career coach. It's like, who's going to help me find a job when I get you know, done with this? Um, I always tell students, it starts when you start the program, honestly. Um, as you go through the program, you're going to be working in this program we call Hunter which basically is tracking what your progress is to that point, And you start your storytelling. You're starting to transition from what career have I had? Um, what am I doing now in this boot camp, And how am I going to bind those together and put it into my future? Um, career coaching is going to help you tie a bow on that and push it forward. But essentially, right when you graduate, you start meeting with your coach. This is one-on-one -on -one training like this would be like for me and you. Um, they're meeting with you. They're doing resume buildings. They're doing a personal branding. They're doing mock interviews. You know, as you can see, the little snake over here kind of talking about what's coming up. Um, they're there to help you be a successful job seeker. They're going to make you work just as hard as you did in the course. And finding a full-time job is a full-time job. Good news for you. Um, you're getting a skill that's highly marketable right now. A lot of opportunity regardless of where you're going. Um, so there's going to be like those ebbs and flows. I always tell students, if you can come in with an open mind, what you want right now and about to start, and then after you go through the course, it'll change in a sense of what job you think you want and then the actual job you get. Um, so just say, I always say, stay open-minded, try to stay positive. Going through a job, interviews after interview, and like getting your yeses and nos is exhausting. It really is. Lean on them to talk to them about how you're feeling. Lean on them to say, what could you do better if it didn't go well? Like this is all a process. All of us have had interview in our lives and it's it's not always the funnest process, but you learn as you go. And that's really what we're here to do. Um, and this is like obviously a big draw on like our North Star. We want to help you find jobs. Like that's our whole goal. A um, couple of just facts of how we do. Um, I know it says 2020. Um, the new one should be out here pretty soon. Uh, should be 2022 at this point. Um, but 86% of students find jobs after graduation. That average salary usually around 74 
um, it's, it's a, like, that's an honest number. Like that's really what it looks like. And the students who kind of can get through the pro program and get through it. Um, the people always ask me like, what about that 14%? Um, that 14% could be, they left because of family issues. They left because of health issues. They decided not to finish. They didn't use career services at the end. Variety of reasons. Um, don't think you're going to fall into that percentage. If you do what's in front of you, this is something that's hard, like I said, but like as the 86% of the students going, like it's a possible and achievable. Just don't feel like you're an outlier or anything like that. You can definitely do this and be one of those good percentages there. All right, I talk like a million miles a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, I obviously open the questions. I'm gonna go jump in here and ask them, but um, if you do have questions or you need something from me, please let me know. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that um, we have everything on here. So let's see what we got. All right. I had one from Karen a little back. She's got two on here. Uh, what times do class normally run? Um, if you're doing full-time live, that's Monday through Friday, nine to six. We do break it up into an East and West coast. So if you're on like Pacific time, you'll be like an eight to five cohort, um, nine to six on East coast. So there's different ones depending on where you are. Um, so you don't have to get up at like the crack of dawn. If you're doing the flex course, it's how it sounds. You can get up when you want to do it. You can put in it before work, after work, on the weekends, there are people around to like one or 2 a.m. East Coast time. Um, so there's opportunity there if you like aren't immediately ready to jump in. Um, got that one about contemplating the differences between that um, and programs. I think I answered that one already. If I didn't, please raise your hand. Um, only available, is career coaching only available for once you land your first Let's see, when you land your first initial job or is it open to might need someone in the future jobs? Great question. So essentially what happens, and like this is the honest truth, we leave it open for students if they wanna come back and say, hey, like I need help finding a new job. Like we do leave that door open for students. What happens is they get that first job, they get their one or two years experience and then they don't need us. The next one just kind of falls in their lap as they kind of learn how to pivot and negotiate as they go. Um, but if you're worried about like jobs and salary negotiation, like raise your hand when you get to career coaches. Like I'm interested in this. All of us could always benefit from learning more about that um, in any job, not just software engineering or product design or whatever it is. Um, but essentially short answer, yes. You could definitely come back if you needed to. But at the end of the day, um, most students find their job and they're happy and they just go along. So that's how kind of what happens. Let's see what else we got on here. Uh, for the full-time program, how long are class sessions? Also, uh, the structures live or recorded? So for the full-time course, um, it's 15 weeks, um, Monday through Friday, nine to six. You'll have about one or two hours of lecture a day. We don't find any value in melting your brain with eight hours of lecture. Our program is like, we're going to give you a little bit. Let's go pair programming. Let's put it into practice. Let's regroup. How's it going? And go on forward with that. Full-time program just to reiterate, can't work a job, can't do anything like that. Like you are in it to win it. Um, it is live as in a sense, like you'll be on a Zoom call with a small group of like 15 to 25 students and y'all are married together for the next 15 weeks. Um, for those programs, because it is very intense, like we can't have too big of cohort or we, everyone feels like a number, um, but we also can't let you get too far off the track. If you're struggling or you're not feeling well and like certain concepts, you're just gonna have to put more time in with our instructors to get over the hump. Um, they're there to help you. Like they're not gonna sit there and like wait for you to get to the final and be like, oh, didn't figure it out. Like they're gonna be like, hey, it's not working. Like, what can we do? Like, how can you relook at this? Um, but that essentially, yes, you'll have those live. For the flex students, you're gonna rely mostly off recorded lectures. Um, there are live lectures you can jump in on because they are centralized lectures. But if you're pacing slower, the lecture might be too far ahead from what you're thinking. Eventually, you might catch up as it rounds about. But essentially, I wouldn't worry about those one or two hours of lecture. You'll be able to watch the recording and you'll use Slack and things like that for flex students. And you're also going at a pace that's digestible. So we're not throwing 50 things at you like you'll be in live. It'll just be at a slower kind of pace going through it. But good question. On average, how long does it take to land a job post completion of the program? Um, one to three months. Um, I've seen students get out the gate, get that first job and they're happy go lucky and they're gone. I've had other students hang around looking for better offers. I've also seen people just have to struggle through the essence of going jobs. Like a lot of no's, like I'm trying and I'm doing things. That's why I talk about attitude and like keeping that, that positive upbeat. 
when it's like hard, um, cause that's, that could happen. Right. Um, but I always say, stay the process, remind yourself the people there are there to help you. If you're doing the things that are asking, if you're frustrated, you can share those with them. Like, remember, like, we're all here to help. This is, this is all everyone's goal. It's in everyone's best interest to help you find a job, to help you move on with what you need at uh, this investment you're making. So that's good there. Um, when job, another on the average, great question. Um, back to it, software engineering program specifically, it's one in three months. Um, I kind of put that for most programs. Like I personally, I specialize in software engineering product design and my students have been finding those in like one in three months. Data science, I feel like it's a diamond dozen. Um, you know, I, I think one in three months is a safe range. Like they don't extend past that usually. Um, so that's why we kind of put it at that just because it goes very efficiently. Um, with the flex course, is there a possibility to pause if the family thing comes up as you once stated um, or started? Um, so flex in general is made for those, 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 those things that happen in life that are unpredictable. We all think we're happy and healthy and everything's fine, but if something happens, um, we want to give you the ability to say, I want to stop this course without losing my progress or losing the money that I've invested. Um, so you would just basically, let's say you stop for a minute while you're doing that. The only difference is your end date will extend. That's why I say it's like a 10 to 15 month course, because if you're hitting it mark over mark, week over week, you could finish in 10 months because um, it is structured. If you're like extending those dates, obviously your end date's going to extend. Um, the one-on-one -on -one coaching that you'll do, I always say like, that's a good time because when you log on, it'll say like, hey, you're, if you continue at this pace, you'll finish in 12 months. You might be thinking, well, I want to finish in 10 months. So that's when you ask instructors, what should I be doing more of to get a, keep a consistent pace to stay in the lines? Um, that's why it's cool at Evan Flows. Like if you, let's say all of a sudden, say, hey, I quit my job midway and you now have all this time, you can put in 50 hours of work and finish faster. So the 10 to 15 months is like, like an honest recommendation, but like I've seen students move a little faster if they have the capabilities. Um, do you make uh, connections to other students in the course? Um, yes. Um, the shortest answer on it, like we're, we're a community here. And I mean that to the like soul heart of me. Like I love people here and who come and everyone's eager and excited to help one another. Your impact on someone's going to help someone move forward and vice versa. Um, the way you go through here, sharing your struggles, sharing your triumphs, like all that's part of it. We want you to connect. And, you know, if you can make some lifetime friends where you're on it, great. If you guys can help each other along the way, I've definitely seen people friend up and end up being hired around the same company. Like those are cool things. Those actually happen. So um, yes, connections are important and hopefully something you want to invest in as well. Um, is the mean salary 76K across all different courses? Do you have a breakdown per discipline? Software engineering, data science. So I always say like, it can be higher depending on your skill set. Every student's going to be different. Someone who's maybe fresh out of high school, never interviewed before, this is their first go at everything. Like, maybe their salary, like a 65 to 75, like coming out, that might seem like the world to someone. Um, you know, someone who's maybe more seasoned, maybe you're like down the line, you've done the corporate job, you have a family, you know, 75, 76 might be like, this is not enough money to sustain, right? So it's going to be different on each one. Um, each course salary, honestly, like you get to the same uh, end, essentially, like eventually you could scale very quickly and get six figures salary, like I'd say in one or two years, depending how quickly you're efficiently working through it. Um, I always like to like ease expectations, like a 65 to 75 K salary is like a good like entry level job. If I told all of y'all that y'all are going to get 90 K and like someone didn't get it, like that would obviously be a little harder to go about. Um, it's very possible. And like these jobs do pay higher dime because they need these people to do these skills. So that's why it goes back to like, don't choose a program just based off money. Like that essentially won't get you where you need to go. Choose what you love and the money will come. I promise. Like either of these disciplines, like they're all really great and they're, they're what we need right now. It's a tangible skill. Um, can you describe the employer partnership teams points listed on the career coaching side? Um, employer partnership team points listed. Um, Correct me if I get this wrong, essentially just like what they're kind of go through, like once you are in the program, like I said, you'll be using like Hunter and things like that. Hunter is essentially a program that tracks your progress. Um, they do ask you to do some journaling in class as well, especially for the live students, you know, how you're processing things like projects you're letting out as you go through the modules, um, just to start building a portfolio and some rapport. And then, like I said, like you're transitioning what your old life was, what your current thing is and what your new life is going to be. And you're showing off to employers that I went to a boot camp. I know my stuff. 
I'm ready to take this on and be uh, an, um, an attribute to your company. Um, and then once you get to the end, like that resume building, that mock interviews, that coaching, it's like if you were searching for jobs right now by yourself, no connections, you're just shooting out resumes and hoping for the best. They're trying to teach you efficient job seeking points to get you where you need to go. Um, yes, there's an employer partner shop or putting up students that we are like looking for graduates, but that's just one bucket. The other buckets could be like, Hey, I'm interested in this company. I see they have a position. How can we apply for that? And what can we go for? You know, what connections do we have that could help you get there? Or how can we approach this to help you to land that job? So there's just different apples and trees to grab. Um, for someone with a desktop support systems, admin background, um, would software journey be a good transition? Um, yes, I definitely, first off, anyone with any background is fine. I think anyone can reinvent themselves and really get into this. Um, I get a lot of computer science people. I get a lot of like previous teachers, um, people in business. I had a lot of gas and oil for a while come over. Um, I don't think anyone's like, you can never, you can always teach a dog new tricks. Um, and especially for someone who's maybe already working in systems and trying to like transition that you might already have just a little more perspective on like the systems you were using. And then now you're going to go in the back end and build the systems you were using. So that could be a good match. Um, to slot and use Trilogy courses platform. I've heard mixed reviews. Um, we use Canvas essentially is what we use. Um, so I'm, I don't believe we use Trilogy, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully that's good or bad, depending. Um, Full-time course, is there an exception to put in a certain amount of hours outside of the nine to six? Um, expectation, sorry. Um, no expectation. I was just framing as this, like student A, catching on really quick, no problem, goes to sleep at night, wakes up, does it again. Student B, not any less than student A, but just taking you longer to learn things. So like what you're struggling with may require more hours that you have to take home and do. Not every night, like we're not going to say, hey, you need to go home for eight more hours after you just put in a lot. But I'm just saying perspective wise, like don't matter which student you end up being, just know that if you have to put in, I'll do whatever it takes to get this done. Like that's the mindset you have to have, um, you know, rest when you need to, like breaks are encouraged and we'll talk about what those look like too. Um, but just, just remember like, you do have homework for the live class and it's preparing you for the next day. Like it's a constant, basically. Like when I talk about live, breathe coding, that's your life. You're just going for it. You got to be in 15 weeks and that's a really fast pace. Uh, when do we start the monthly installments? Is it post completion of the program or immediately? So it is during the course, um, depending on when you start. So if you started, it's either the first or the 15th of the month. So start June 6th, your first payment would be on the 15th, June 15th. Um, and it's throughout the course. So if you're in the 15 week course, you'll finish payments before you graduate. If you're in the flex course, you'll finish payments probably before you graduate as well. Um, or if you go really quickly in there. So it just depends on kind of the length and how you put that in there. Um, Ed aid is who we use in case you're just kind of looking up like who it, they are and how they work installments. Um, you mentioned uh, data science was a diamond dozen. Um, does that mean it's simply easy program or does that mean it's a large number of students. Um, I just mentioned it as in like when I talk to people in data science, um, you know, I I personally think it's like uh, it's hard to find someone who has the passion to want to do it and the skill set. They're not always the same. Um, you know, you can have a passion for data science, but the skill set could be like, I'm just not interested in that part of it. Um, and it could go vice versa that you're just like, I have a passion for math, but I don't really want to do the work that comes with the data scientist. So there's no rhyme or wrong reason there. I wasn't trying to like say like, oh, you're not going to do it because you're not in this category. It just is one of those things that I just feel like data science are more rare sometimes. Um, do you have any, any opinion on all the anti bootcamp chatter on the platform like Reddit? I'm sure it's based heavily on what's personal experience and hard to ignore. You know, reviews are reviews. I think if you dig hard enough, every bootcamp has their, their rays of sunshine and not. Um, we wouldn't still be in business if these things weren't working. And I think it's hard to adapt to new things. Like if you're used to the four-year college and that's what you do and that's the money you spend, like that's the only way. There's new ways. We live in a COVID world now. There's a million new ways. People want to work remote. People want to do a whole new life. And like, it's kind of exciting. Like um, I respect both sides. I think it's it's like everyone's going to have their their fill of it. Um, I Once again, it's a hard skill to learn whether you want to go do this for free online and like work on it that way or you want to do a boot camp. Like obviously we're in business for a reason how we do it, but um, I think it's worth a review, right? You weigh the options how you think. I would ask other students, um, people who had good experiences, bad experiences, like it all matters. 
Um, there's a lot of great boot camps out there. I, I would never talk about poorly about any of them. I think they all have good merit, you know, money and time, and then just find the place that you feel like you want to put that time and effort in. It's an important piece. Um, do you have any tech experience background or have you gone through these boot camps? Great question. I, by nature, am not a software engineer. Um, I joke very openly that you students are superheroes to me doing something that I could not imagine doing a full-time job as. Um, that just goes back to the point that like, I have tried coding, just not my cup of tea. Um, I'd rather help you go forward in your lives and your careers and do something that is very inspiring and something that I've seen people just change their whole life trajectory. Um, you know, whether it be software engineering, like if I was going to pick one of these out of a hat, product design would be mine. I like the more creative type. I'd rather do some sociology type stuff rather than coding. I can't even type that fast. Um, but don't let that discourage you. Just let you know that like everyone's different. Everyone's got different paths. Um, I think it's an, it's an exciting opportunity. Um, thank you. That was a tough question to present. No problem, Greg. I got you. Um, let me see what else. Got to make sure we got all those. Great questions. I love them. This is great. I hope you all having a good time. I'm having a good time. Um, any more questions that I can answer for y'all? No, that's a little there. Go one more. What's next? Cool. Talk about what's next. Um, you can schedule a chat with me. You can schedule a chat with our Flatirons admissions team. You can apply. Um, you can go onto our events page. You can join more events if you want to see like what coding is front hands. Um, you can come to more events like this. Um, you could also just sign up and say like, hey, I want to do a free course and just see how that's going to go. Um, those are all on our website, things you can do and things you can move forward with. Um, I'm definitely here to help you out um, and like any way I can. I, I really just love chatting. If you want to chat about whatever, I'm happy to do it. Um, and then let's see what else we've got on here. Um, just a big thank you for being here. And then let's see, Greg got one more question. Who is this? Do I have to reach out to you directly in order to get this slide presentation or automatically sent out? Great question. It'll be automatically sent out. Most likely probably tomorrow. It takes some time to process. Um, this will be recorded too. If you just want to watch the highlights all over again. Um, and if you have more questions, um, there'll be emails on there and missions and all that kind of stuff. But, um, Y'all been a great group. I really enjoyed all the questions. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope you guys apply. I hope you guys find your kind of passion for this. Um, but it's been, it's been fun. So thank you guys so much. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye.